Hello? Craig speaking. I wanted to read you my leave for tomorrow's column. I... Oh, at the door. Hold the line, Barry, while I see who it is. Look, I told you, it's no use coming here. You're just wasting your time. My life's too short. My transcription, Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, starring William Gargan. Barry Craig speaking. It was one of those nights. I was sitting in my office with my feet hooked on the corner of my desk, trying to whip up some enthusiasm over an assignment to bodyguard a couple of tin coffee pots at the Long Island wedding when the telephone rang. I let it ring a few times before I reached out and snagged it off its hook. After all, when they're that anxious, they can be mighty worthwhile. Yeah, who's this? Al White from the Chronicle. Remember me? Oh, Al White, sure. How's the gossip column racket these days? Warming up. I got a chore for you. I'll bet you have. Meaning what? I've been reading that column of yours. Those cracks you've been making about Larry Slade throwing the big fight, they can't have made him very happy. I hear he's looking for you. Yeah, so do I. I need a bodyguard. You keep printing that Slade took a dive, and you're more likely to need an undertaker. I was right about it, wasn't I? I even called around. Sometimes there's something better to be than right. Such as? Alive. Something you're not likely to be if you keep needling Slade. He's big and sensitive. My heart bleeds for him. Look, do you want this job or not? All right, Al. Where do I start guarding the body? The Casa Daily Bar. Midnight. It wasn't the kind of case I'd like, but a private detective is like a doctor or a lawyer. He can't always pick and choose. Anyway, a few minutes short of midnight, I parked the car outside the Casa Daly. It was an old white frame building that Ace Daly had converted into a plush boob trap. One of those joints where if they don't get your roll with the fancy prices at the bar, they got back rooms all rigged up with roulette wheels and crap tables where they do. I was holding down the bar with an elbow, squinting through the fog of blue-gray smoke when my client, Al White, walked in. Waiting long? Not very. Seen Ace Daly? Yeah, he went in the game room a little while ago. Larry Slade with him? Champ? No, why? Just a hunch. He'll be here, too, before the night's over. Daly's in the game room now, huh? Why the interest in Ace Daly? I thought you were after Slade's high. Maybe I'm after both of them. You think Ace had a hand in fixing that fight? Yeah, and tonight I'm looking for proof. Any objection? Sure skin, if you like to wear it with holes in it. That's what I'm paying you to prevent. Maybe we better make this one uh, cash in advance. (laughs) Can't you trust me? Oh, sure. I just don't want to have to go to the trouble of suing your estate to get my money. Oh, very funny. Hey, 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 wait a minute. You must read tea leaves. Huh? Don't look now, but your old friend, the ex-champ, just came in. Is he heading this way? No, he's going on through into the gaming world. Good. What's good about it? I had a tip slave would be showing up for the payoff tonight. It settled him. He jumped the fight and daily paid him to do it. You still haven't got any proof of a payoff. With a little luck, we might even get that. What are you going to do, follow Slade in? Not yet. Give him a minute or two head start. He won't go direct to Daly's office. He'll probably waste a couple of minutes looking around in the gaming room. Just to make sure he isn't being followed. Now, if we time it right, we may catch him in the act. And if we do, I'll have the biggest story of the year. I only hope you live to write it. I'll write it. Don't you worry about me. All right, then. I'll worry about me. I only hope that I live to read it. We stayed at the bar, finished our drink, and listened while a tinny five-piece combo did unmentionable things to a popular ballad. Then Al White dropped a handful of silver on the bar and nodded he was ready. I led the way out of the bar to the disguised entrance of the roulette room. The door was presided over by a tuxedoed man with a broken nose. We stepped into a small vestibule, waited while he closed the door behind us. Then another door opened, and we stepped into the game room. 
A low buzz of conversation, spiced with the click of roulette balls, rolled out toward us. A dozen or more people were huddled around a huge roulette layout in the center. On the far side, a hot crap game was in session. Peter raced the slave was in sight, so we ambled past the bank of slot machines toward a door marked private. From behind it, we could hear the sound of someone laughing. Ready? All right. Let's go. Let be your marriage. Be as happy as you are. Beautiful, my dear. Hold it, Judge. We got company. Something just crawled out of the woodwork. Something was wrong. Instead of a payoff, it looked like a party. Lifting a champagne glass with Ace Daly and Slade was the most gorgeous redhead I'd ever seen. And a tall, distinguished, white-haired man was just proposing a toast. It wasn't what we'd figured to find. But Al White didn't let that stop him. He walked right in like the life of the party. Or maybe the death of it. Hello, Larry. Evening, folks. I've been looking for you, White. I'm going to knock you... Easy, chap. Easy. My client doesn't like to be crowded. Make it easy on yourself and you keep at it. it out, He's got it coming. I'm going to... Him... Okay. Okay, Ace. You're white. On your way. Daly, you could lose a lot of customers talking to them that way. I didn't send for you. Get out. Ace, who is this man? Yeah, Ace. Why don't you introduce us? I'm Al White, Mr. Dare. I read a column for the Chronicle. How do you know my name? recognizing faces as part of my business. And how are you, Judge Adair? I thought you and Ace Daly were old political enemies. How nice to see that you've gotten together. I, uh, I think perhaps, sir, uh, you'd better excuse us, Ace. Louise and uh, I... Sit uh... down, Judge. I'll take care of White. He's just about to leave. Don't mind if I do, now. You see, I came here looking for a story in the fight fix the other night. Oh, it's small potatoes compared to a political fix. What does he mean, Ace? You and Ace, the happy couple. Well, really? And maybe if Ace helps the judge to get reelected, he can claim the bride as his reward. What the story? Ace, he mustn't print that. Not before election. He'd ruin everything. Don't worry, Why, judge. He... He's not printing anything. That's where you're wrong. I'm not only printing it, but I'm going to do a feature piece on it. Don't push your luck too far. You're still healthy because nothing will happen to you in my place. Providing you're out of it in five minutes. Just let me take him, Ace. Let me Without take him. Without a rehearsal, champ. I thought you always rehearsed your fight. Well, you little rat, I'll kill you with the last Look, thing I... champ. I don't have my hand in my pocket because it's cold. I told you the guy's my client. Sit down, champ. As for you, Craig, put up the heater. Ace, you've got to stop him. He mustn't print that. It would ruin us, all of us. Don't worry, Louise. If he so much as hints at it in that rag of his... I'll not only be on the line of people who want to kill him, I'll be at the head of it. As we weren't in any position to cop any popularity prizes at the moment, there didn't seem to be much point in hanging around the Casa Daly. We got out with about two minutes left of the head start Ace had given us. White insisted that I drop him off at the combination office and apartment where he worked. So I locked him in for the night, then headed for my own apartment and some long-delayed shut-eye. I didn't need anybody to rock me to sleep as I was practically snoring by the time my head hit the pillow. So when the phone started to dance off a stand a couple of hours later, it took me a few minutes to locate it. Oh, stand still, will you? Yeah? Now, White. What time is it? Oh, about 4.30. Oh, it's the middle of the night. Not for me. Either my office hours. Just finishing up tomorrow's column. I want to read you an item. I can wait until tomorrow to read it. Hey, what's that? Oh, the doorbell. Who is it? Hold the line a minute. White, don't answer that. White, stay away from that. White! White! Without stopping to think twice, I knew that whoever was paying that late call to Al White carried a peculiar calling card engraved in lead. I started dressing, made par for the cost, and was headed for a cab in less than six minutes. A police cruiser outside of Al White's apartment house told me somebody else had heard the shots. When I finally got to his door, it was opened by Sergeant Marty Moran of Homicide. Well, yeah, I might have known. What are you doing here? White was my client. Why is Don't let's get cute, Marty. I was talking to him on the phone when he got us. Oh, that accounts for the phone being off the hook. Do I get in? 
I suppose so. What were you talking about when it happened? He wanted to read me an item out of tomorrow's column. Column? He didn't find any column. Just a few blank sheets and a typewriter. No column. Yeah, there he is. We haven't moved him yet. Yeah, me hasn't gotten here. Got it in the back, huh? All five of them. Hmm. Small caliber gun. 32 or less, I'd say. Mm, big enough to do the job. Yeah. And you said there was no trace of a column. No, just a few blank sheets of paper and his typewriter. All right to handle? Yeah, I guess so. Barry, what's on your mind? Just a hunch. I'm wondering if Al White had the same habit most new triple boys have of jamming two or three sheets into their machine at a time. See, you got something there. If he did, we may be able to bring out the impression on the second sheet. Well, that's worth a try. There should be some dusting powder in the lab kit. Yeah, here's some. Let's have that second sheet. Here you are. I think that's enough dusting powder on it. A little more, maybe. Shake it around. Well, what do you know? It worked. Can you read it, Sergeant? I think so. First, let's blow off the excess. Yep, there you are. Clear as a carbon copy. Take your vows later. Uh Uh-oh. Here it is. Listen. The mob is giggling over Ace Daly's payoff if the election goes right. Now, instead of fixing fights for sugar, the Ace is fixing elections for honey. Ace Daly in this? Yeah. He told White that if that item appeared, he'd kill him. Well, why didn't you say so? That makes it easy. We put out a pickup on Ace, and we got it made. Better pick up Larry Slade, too, Marty. The champ? Yeah, he got into the act, too. He promised to kill White if he mentioned fixed fights again in his column. Oh, fine. First, I have no suspects. Now I've got more than I have teeth of my own. How many other characters promised to make this creep a prospect for a headstone? Offhand, I don't recall. But as I think of them, I'll keep you informed, Marty. I got away from Sergeant Moran as soon as I could. He was yelling pickup orders into the phone as I closed the door behind me. On the street, I grabbed a cab told the cabbie to double back up a couple of streets to make sure there was no police trail on me, then gave the driver the address of the Adair home. It was an old converted brownstone house with a large brass knocker. Through the glass door, I saw the commoded figure of Louise Adair. Over her shoulder on the stairway, I could see her father, his white hair shining in the gloom. What? What do you want? I'd like to see you for a few minutes, Mr. Dare. Now? What about? Murder. Murder? Yes, Al White, the columnist, a few hours ago. I see. Uh, perhaps you'd better come in. Uh, what is it, Louise? You go on to bed, Dad. This uh, gentleman wants to ask me a few questions. Maybe your father ought to sit in on this. Leave my father out of it. Nonsense, Louise. Now, uh... What's this all about? Al White, the columnist you met last night at Ace Daly's, is dead. Murdered. And this uh, gentleman, being a detective, has it figured out that Ace did it? I didn't say that, Mr. Dare. I said he had a motive. So did a lot of other people. You, for instance, or your father. Ah. Why not? If White printed that story about you and Ace, it might have cost your father the election. And it certainly wouldn't help your social standing. Why, that's absurd. Ace and I were merely waiting for the proper time to announce our engagement. After the election, I suppose, when it wouldn't be so embarrassing. I can't have you making insinuations like that. I must ask you to leave. Suit yourself, Judge. I was just trying to make it easy on you. White was my client. And he's dead now. Maybe so. But when a guy hires me to see that nothing happens to him and something does, I want the guy that made it happen. But don't you see? We'll get dragged into it. The scandal will ruin Dad's chances of re-election. That's unfair, Louise. How can we help? Well, you can give me a fill-in on the time set up last night. What time did you leave the Casa Daly? Mm, about four. We came home and went right to bed. Four, huh? That would give Ace plenty of time to do the job. Was the champ there when you left? Uh, Mr. Slade? No, he left before we did. His uh, uh, lady friend dances in one of the clubs. Lily DeVore. If you can call it dancing. He saw her last night, huh? That might be his out. My father and I'd like to get some sleep. Uh, If you have any more questions, would you mind if we discuss them later in some more suitable time and place? All right. Let's say 4 o'clock this afternoon in my office. 
Meanwhile, I think I'll drop by the Carteret Arms and have a chat with Lily DeVorg. The Carteret Arms was a big, expensive-looking pile of rocks in the West 50s. By the time I got there, a heavy drizzle had started, and it didn't pep me up any to learn that Lily hadn't gotten home yet. I found a soggy cigarette in my jacket pocket, got it burning, and settled back to wait. The gleaming wet face of a jeweler's clock across the street said ten after two when a cab skidded to a stop at the curb. Lily DeVore jumped out, ran for the protection of the lobby. I gave her ten minutes to get settled, then crossed over. It took a two-spot and a lot of fast talk to get by unannounced. The two-spot was more effective than the talk. Anyway, I got up to 4D and knocked. Yeah? Message for Mr. Vaughn. Coming. Okay, Buster, let's have... Say, what is this? I want a little talk with you. Get your foot out of that door. Nice of you to ask me in. You mean I had a choice? Look, I don't know what's on your mind, but you don't... Don't be so modest, Lily. You know you're irresistible. Yeah. And I know something else, too. You're liable to be unconscious when the champ hears about this. I make it a policy never to worry unnecessarily. And I make it a policy never to entertain strange men without a warrant. That goes double for private cops. Outside. Okay. I just thought I'd help keep your champ out of the hot seat. But if that's the way you feel about it... Look, you can't pin that killing on Larry Slade. You know he didn't do it. That's not what the police think. Where is he, Lily? I don't know. Hey, where do you think you're going? Oh, just to have a look around. Get out of here and leave me alone. What's in there? I thought I heard something. Oh, mice, no doubt. That's just a closet. Stay away from it. Stay away, I tell you. As I moved Lily from in front of the closet door, I turned my back for a second. The door swung open behind me. I heard rather than saw the blow that knocked me to my knees. In that moment, the man in the closet made a break for it. He headed across the room for the bedroom door beyond I was a little groggy, but I managed to follow him. By the time I got to the bedroom, I heard him go through the window to the fire escape beyond. I followed, stuck my head out. He snapped a shot at me from below. Gouged a chunk of windowsill a foot or so from my head. I pulled back fast. I wasn't that curious. Lily was still in the living room when I walked back. Okay, baby, playtime is over. I lose my boyish smile when people use my skull for target practice. Who was it? I don't know. A prowler, I guess. If it was Slade, why did he run? You can alibi him for last night, can't you? What? Sure. Or can you? Of course I can. We were together all morning. He left dailies before four. When did he get to your place? About four. We left the club together, and then we... You're lying, Lily, aren't you? No! If you are, I can check up at the club. You might as well admit it now. Oh, all right. The director called a rehearsal on next week's show. Slade got bored and walked out on it about 4.15. We worked through. In other words, he had time to knock off White. If he didn't do it, then why was he trying to hide here in your closet? Slade wasn't in that closet. Who was? I don't know. Who was it, Lily? Oh, what's the use? Why should I cover for him? It, it was Ace Daly. What was he doing here? Same as you, looking for the champ. To help him fix an alibi? Slade doesn't need an alibi. He didn't do anything. Why don't you leave him alone? Maybe I can help him. Where is he, Lily? I told you I don't know. And I wouldn't tell you if I did. That's what I thought. Just the same, if you want to see him get a break, you get to him and tell him to get to me. I didn't have long to wait. I'd just gotten back to the four walls and desk I laughingly called my office, shuffled the two ads and rent bill that represented my mail... I lit a cigarette when the phone rang. Hello? Larry Slade. I hear you want to see me. What about? I don't do business over the phone. Come in and... Yeah, and walk right into a police stakeout? Okay, so I'll come to see you. Where? If it's a plant, you'll never walk away from it. Where? The end of Pier 6, East River. Make it 3.30 sharp. I'll be there. And come alone. Because if you don't, you'll have plenty of company when you leave. He'll be carrying you. Pier 6 was a deserted strip that stretched out into the murky water of East River for a quarter of a mile. Anybody walking to the end would be visible for minutes before he reached the end, setting him up as a perfect target. The goose pimples and icicles running down my spine were caused by the cold wind, I think. The rain hadn't let up, and I was drenched by the time I reached the end of the pier. 
Larry Slade stepped from behind an old rotting shack that had been a watchman's shanty. He looked bigger than a Brahma bull and twice as nasty. Hello, champ. What do you want? The one who killed our wife. The cops think maybe you did. I can read. I don't think you did. That's nice, so... Give yourself up. I don't want you to take the fall for the killer if you didn't do it. I don't take any falls for nobody. You're set up for one right now and don't know it. You're lying. Why should I? Ace Daly's the only one got anything to gain by lying. He wouldn't cross me. Not unless he needed a fall guy, and he does. Why don't you tell him that? Hey, Ace. Busy little man, aren't you, Craig? I tried to get around, only this time I didn't get around fast enough. Looks like you beat me to it, Ace. Looks like I did. He thinks you're trying to pin the murder on me, Ace. Now, why would I want to do that, Larry? Why would I want to frame the guy who's giving me my alibi? Your alibi? He hasn't even got one for himself. Not after he left Lily Duvall last night. Oh, yes, he has. Larry came back to the castle daily. We were both there together at 4.30 this morning. Now, what do you say to that? You've had time to cook up a nice little story, haven't you? But coming from the two principal suspects, I doubt if the police will take your word for it. You'll have to think of something better than that to prove you were really there. Don't worry. We can. After he got home, Judge Adair called me up to talk things over. That's funny. The judge didn't mention it to me. But then maybe you haven't had a chance to give him his briefing yet. Don't worry, Craig. He'll back us up. Willie Ace, aren't you forgetting something? What? You can't help him now. When the story of your little deal gets out and the papers tie it in with this murder, your support would be the kiss of death. His only chance of re-election now is to wash his hands of you as fast as he can and try to make hay on the other side. Wait a minute. Sorry, Ace, but I gotta go see the judge. I'd kind of like to hear what he has to say before he's had any coaching. Stop him, Slade. What do you want me to do? You're the champ. Figure it out for yourself. Larry Slade grinned, licked his lips. He hunched his left shoulder a bit. And I saw the punch start somewhere near the tip of the shoe, but I couldn't get my jaw out of the way fast enough. It landed like a ton of bricks, and the pier came up and slapped me in the face. I don't know how long I was out. Could have been minutes, probably. It was only seconds. Both Ace and Slade were gone when I opened my eyes. I couldn't find it in my heart to regret their going. All I could do was hope that they were going to the wrong place if they wanted to locate Judge Adair. I managed to get a cab and gave the driver my office address. When I got there, two people were at my door trying to knob. Even in the semi-gloom, I had no difficulty making out the sleek lines of Louise Adair as one. The other was her father. Looking for me? Oh! I thought you'd forgotten our four o'clock appointment. I, uh... I've thought of something you should know. Good. Let's go inside where we can talk. Make yourselves comfortable. I suppose we really should have told the police that Dad preferred to talk to you first. Well, let's have it. I think I know who killed your client. I thought you might. Judge Adair, after you and your daughter got home this morning, did you phone the Casa Daly? Why, why, how, how did you know about that? Then you did make the call. Why, yes, about 4.30. Well, there goes the old ball game. I thought that Ace was lying. But Ace wasn't there. No one answered the phone. He didn't? Why didn't you tell me that this morning? Well, Dad didn't want to get involved. It would cost him the election. Cost a man his life. I finally realized too late. When Daly tried to reach me, Dave... I see I got here just in time. Ace! No, don't shoot, Daly. I won't tell anything. Don't... Why, you dirty double-crossing old buzzer. He's got a gun, Dad! When the smoke cleared, Ace Daly was sprawled in my doorway. Louisa Dare was doing a good job of trying to swallow her fist. The judge stood dazed, staring down at an old 22 target pistol that he still held in his hand. I managed to pin my eyeballs back in their sockets long enough to walk over to Ace. At that moment, the door to my office burst open and Sergeant Marty Moran came tearing in. What's going on here? Holy cow, Ace Daly, who did it? I... I'm afraid I did, Sergeant. It was self-defense. Daly was going to kill both of us. M- Mr. Judge shot him, all right. Why should Daly want to kill you, Judge? He wanted to keep me quiet. I knew that he killed Mr. White. You were taking an awful chance going up against a pro like Daly with that pea shooter. I couldn't keep quiet and see him get away with murder. 
Even if it does cost me the election, I, I couldn't do it. Cost you the election? You kidding? You come out of this mess a hero. Delivered a killer all wrapped up. Just too bad Ace Daly didn't kill White. Didn't kill him? What do you mean? Yeah, you better translate that for me, too, Barry. Daly couldn't have killed White. I was talking to White when the killer knocked. He got up and let him into the apartment. So? He wouldn't hire me to hold his hand while he was talking to Daly in a public place, then let him into his apartment. But uh, Ace could have disguised his voice. Old wash, baby. White was shot in the back. That means he opened the door to the killer, then turned to lead the way into the apartment. He never would have turned his back on Daly. In that case, I have a little surprise for you. Brian, bring Slade in. We picked up Slade waiting outside in Daly's car. Ace, who did it? I, I'm i afraid I did, Mr. Slade. I thought he killed White. Which leaves us only one logical suspect. Oh, I get it. I'm supposed to be the fall guy, eh? Why, you two bit Seamus, I'm going to let you have it. Right in the whiskers. You KO'd the champ. I owed him, that's it. Holy cow, so I did. Hey, he didn't throw that fight. He's got a glass jaw. Well, I'll get him out of here and booked. He didn't kill White either. He never would have used a gun. He'd get a bigger charge out of beating him to a pulp. Well, if neither of them did kill White, who... You did, Judge. What? What? And that wasn't self-defense when you shot Ace Daly in my office. It was murder. That's fantastic. Why should my father kill either of them? Because White was getting set to break a story that would have blasted your father's chances. Ace knew your father killed him and covered him for your sake. But your father knew when the heat was on, Daly would throw him to the wolves. But to go up against Daly with a twenty-two. Ace was a sitting duck. The judge shot him before he knew he was being double-crossed using me as a witness that it was self-defense. Now, see here. This, this is ridiculous. I was in bed when White was killed. Sorry, Judge. I went to your house an hour or more after the killing. You were supposed to be in bed, but your hair wasn't even mussed. Oh, I won't listen to these lies. Tell them, Dad. Tell them. What's the use, Louise? I took a long chance and lost. I killed them. Well, they can't prove a thing. Yes, they can, now that they know the story. I left too many traces. Why did you kill White, Judge? I had to. My only hope of escaping prosecution for malfeasance was to be re-elected to cover what I had done during my last term. I would have done anything to be re-elected. Even come to blows with a thug like Daly. Don't talk, Dad. They can't prove a thing. It's no use, my dear. I'm ready to make a full statement. Okay, boys, take the judge out. We'll book him later. For murder, I guess. Barry, while we're waiting for the medical examiner, tell me... Not now, Marty. I've got an important date. Anybody I know? Lily DeVore. You crazy? That's the champ's girl. He's plenty jealous. Plenty jealous, but I just found out he's got a glass jaw. So long, Marty. So long, folks. See you next week. Craig, Confidential Investigator, starring William Gargan. Next week, another exciting transcribed story starring America's number one detective, William Gargan as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. Tonight's script was written by Frank Kane and featured Santos Ortega as Ace Daly. Edward King directed. Your announcer is Don Pardo. All names and places mentioned in this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Three 
three times mean good times on NBC.